we built the product for like I think two years before anybody saw the first version of it. And like I just went all in, right? You know, people are like, oh, you should talk to your customer, show them things all the way. I didn't do any of that because I knew this problem so well that I didn't want to be distracted. And I think one of the, I don't need to validate the problem. The problem already exists, right? There are other companies with similar products that have good businesses. I like one of the best ways to validate your idea is the fact that someone else is doing the same thing and you just know that you can do better. So it took, yeah, a good two years before we, we put it out there. And um, because we are bootstrapped, it was particularly important to me that we start charging from day one. And that for me is, is not as hard as for other people because I, I have a background in sales, right? So I know how to create value and get people to put in their credit card, but it still has to be a good product. And because I've sold business software for so long, I knew exactly what, what it would take for someone to give you their credit card. So we probably spend an extra six months just making it like just going the extra mile, like making sure the last 2% was perfect before I put it out there. And the team was actually quite frustrated because they're like, why don't you just put it out there? I'm like, I can't. Like it is so hard to get your first audience to come on board that if you show them something that's less impressive than they, what they expect, it's going to be extremely hard to get them back. So I didn't want to put anything out there until I knew that somebody would pay for it. Okay. So let's unpack that a little bit because on on the face of it, <clears throat> excuse me, this is a conversation I've had countless times with founders and sometimes, not always, it turns out there was just this, it was about perfection. It was this reluctance to just get this thing out there and they look back at it and they say, yeah, you know what? I could have probably done it in a third of the time if I could go back. I think with your situation, there are a couple of things that I think are worth understanding. When you said you really understood this problem well, how many webinars had you personally done before you started working on eWebinar? Wow, I can't, I can't even count the number, um, but Spacio, I ran that company for five years. Three of those years, we had a product. And webinars was the only way in which I was able to deliver a demo because um, you're not sitting beside someone, right? When I say a webinar, I'm also counting like one-on-one -on -one meetings. Um, and I would do them every day. Like I did them every day for, for three years, whether it was a demo or whether it was a kickoff or some onboarding or new feature training. Like I was always using the webinar platform that sucked the least. And it was like, so, go to webinar and join me, and then Zoom, right? Over a thousand? Probably over a thousand. Okay. And so, so I think that that's important. That's an important piece of information because people can go and look at a problem in a market and think they understand it. But maybe they've only spent a few weeks or months researching. And there are so many nuances that, you know, if I went into the webinar space, I'd kind of say, well, I kind of know what, how webinars work and, and how to build a software and all of this stuff. But there's so much nuance when you actually go through and do a thousand plus webinars as a user that you have such a deeper understanding of the problem and you've already gone out and researched and looked at other products and you were turned off by a lot of them because they didn't have that great first impression, right? From what I understand. Mm -hmm. So it kind of makes sense that you've gone through this, you have this really deep understanding, this deep pain, and you want to get this right. 